Hey everyone, Art Abreez here, Summoner Wars League, Eternal Council, and Fallen Kingdom. This is a standard opening for Eternal Council. You get some boost generation early on, then move Edia back to safety. Of course, Edia whiffs on that carrier, and here comes a big blood summon turn, the most dangerous weapon that the Fallen Kingdom have. Getting damage on Edia early is important because she carries the biggest hammer of any card in the Eternal Council deck. Usually you want to activate Seek and Insight, and the more you attack with Edia, the more Insight will last through future turns. Psy Assault is situational, but as you can see, there is a good situation to use Psy Assault. It can clear out large groups of units, not unlike Volcano, with the Obsidian Dwarves. However, you're often in a contest once you've used it for keeping either size, salt, or insight. That didn't seem to be a problem in this case. Of course, Edia's also got two great commons to deal with the undead, and that's the Sage and the Mind Knight. Both have four health which is somewhat difficult for carriers to kill even in two attacks. There's only a 48% chance. The Fallen Kingdom is less concerned about losing cards to the Mind Knight's ability because they can get them back with Red Talus's Rays. And of course, Hellforge can help take that Mind Knight out in two attacks and sometimes one attack, just like we saw back there. One thing I would point out to the FK player, here the carrier is easily dealt with. I know that a lot of elite players will, instead of making a further attack, will attack their own carrier in order to give that carrier an extra two health. Here we see Sacrificial Pyre being played and Blood Summon. The reason why this is a problem is because Edia has played Learn on the last turn. She's going to get both of those cards. The reason why Learn has two boost on the card like that is because getting the value out of it, the other opponent's cards, is too easily telegraphed. So more often than not, Learn is used just to give Edia extra boost the following turn. However, Retalis has made a big mistake here by giving those cards to Edia. Not only can she roll out all those awesome common units she has in quick succession, but theoretically she could use Sacrificial Pyre over multiple turns using Persist and actually get all of her health back. I know we see Malianar being used here. That's a good use for him to place him where he is. I usually burn Malinar. I almost always use Ovi, and I definitely try and use Dominus Cadu as much as possible. It's worth mentioning here that you can see just how easily the Fallen Kingdom gains an economic advantage over the Eternal Council, even though Retalus was burning a lot of his own cards just to get attacks on that Mind Knight. He's got them all back now. Their discard piles are virtually even. Sages in particular are an extremely economical unit and I have gained many an economic advantage in games that I played with that unit. However, matchups against the Fallen Kingdom, that won't happen. Typically, the Eternal Council loses economy to the Fallen Kingdom. And that's pretty much just because of carriers and rays. Something unique you're going to see about Blood Summon here being used by Eternal Council is the Eternal Council's ability to get extra cards in their hand. There was seven at the start of this turn, and as you can see, almost all of them were units. This allowed Edia to swarm the opponent and get right in there with those two sages in tow. That's if that you know that's kind of lucky, but not that lucky. Good game to uh, Bradolf. Nice win. Good luck in the rest of your games.